Well, monster truck is out here right now cooling off a, a deer carcass. I took off about 6.15 last night on foot. Came home about quarter after uh, seven with a bloody arrow. Um, this was really cool because last year I didn't shoot any deer. So to get one, of course, is great. But also I had a really good uh, shot on it. It was a good distance and I hit it straight in the heart, um, which of course gives me some confidence. So we had this one hanging overnight. It's about 61 degrees right now, but today's getting up to 80. So rather than trying to, I could keep it cool. You know, I could put this in the shady spot, wrap it in a uh, bed sheet and keep it cool throughout the day. But, huh, I'm not sure. I'll get an opportunity to age some later as we get cooler in the year. So I think we're just gonna get this one in, cut it up, get some to eat, and get some canned. And I just put some venison jerky in the oven because we like getting that immediate reward. For those of you who've uh, never processed your own wild game like this, or even sheep, goats, things like that from the homestead, they have some really nice disconnect switches on each of the legs and the neck where if you find that part, you just disconnect it. Really cool because the uh, back leg tendons still stay intact on this side of the disconnect switch. And it's amazing how easy these are to pull off. I just thought I would show you that quick because you'd think they'd be more attaching it than what there actually is. And this is just like a $2 fillet knife from uh, Walmart. Look at that, just that easy. I'm gonna get this in, let the family start tearing into that and then get the other side here going too. Well, here we got some of it cut up. The front shoulders, I didn't split the hind quarters yet. There's the rest of it. Darling, did you see what I did to your table? Yes, you've blessed our table. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think looking at all this right now? It looks like we're going to have a really good amount of meat. And I'm excited. I'm excited for some canned venison. It's delicious. Mm. So one cool thing in our family is that if we pull out a pile of little aprons and a pile of little knives, what usually happens? They get to work. Yeah, a whole <laughs> pile of little peppers gets to work. And, and uh, I think they really enjoy it as well. We put on sometimes a little audio story or audio book and they'll listen to that while they're chopping up the meat piecing it all up and stuff and so they really enjoy that did you see what i did to your oven after i fleshed the hide yes let's go look at that so i like getting uses out of things which means the skin whether i use it for rawhide or some sort of like you know deer leather or buckskins or just a, a tanned hide for like a throw rug type thing I like doing stuff like that and there's some nice thin kind of fly strips um, of meat on there. So after I took care of this, I cut all that off and uh, marinated it overnight and this morning got it in this oven. Show me what you got, lady. Alright. Yeah. There we are. Do you want me to pull it Yeah, pull that one out so you can see. So some of them I did thinner. Some of them I did nice and thicker, but they've been marinated overnight. We also have this wonderful loaf of bread. I think Pinky Pepper made the dough, and then I spiced it up a bit with some different things. And we finished it, baking it late last night, so we didn't eat any. So I'm just putting it in here to uh, warm up. But I like marinating them overnight. Oh, garlic salt, smoked paprika, black pepper, just crushed red pepper, whatever seasons I want, and then usually a little bit of lemon juice too. I've got the oven at the lowest setting it'll be right now, which is um, like 170 degrees. And we'll just leave it in there for some hours till it looks right. Yeah, you can pull it in. Some of the bigger ones up there too, so. Pretty cool. But this gets us our immediate reward uh, for harvesting the deer. We're able to have some jerky right away. And uh, you know, we may be eating that jerky before we're even done cooking this up. Bug, what do you think? What do you think about this? We also have the heart. Speechless. Which we could 
try we try to we could try to grill it. We could grill it and uh, I'll insert a picture of that heart. But my bolt went in through the other side of this deer, about like here on the other side of the deer, straight and stopped in the heart. So there's an entry wound in the heart, but no exit wound. She was dead by the time I found her a couple minutes later. And uh, this would be probably, I'm looking at a doe that was born last spring. So this would be about a year and a half old or so. Um, something like that. She's a yearling, um, is what I would call her. And that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm excited. This is awesome. <laughs> so, if you look here, neck, and then you get the back. Now remember, between the neck and the tail, this is actually a lot like what you're going to find on a gar, because there's two big boneless back straps, and if you go down right here, on each side of the backbone, and you go till you hit the ribs. This is just like taking the meat off of a gar at this point. And then right here, same thing. You hear me? I'm going right next to the backbone, and I'm stopping when I hit those ribs. And these are going to be the back straps. So then I go like this after I make my initial cut. Hear that? Right here, playing Oops. edge of it is you see how you can kind of see it here mm -hmm. so here's where shoulder muscles come over it but here and you can look from the end too you can look from the end ones see it's just two big tubes of meat okay so i see that this one comes across here where did you put the bread it's in the oven I'm heating up the bread right now. Somebody who's mobile, get a nice big clean bowl too. And if you're kind of going at a slight angle where you're cutting off, bumping into the bone each time. Water with water? Wow, no. Look at that. No. The size of that. And there's another meat off the top. Nice. Stuff. We'll separate that. And, you know, this is one of your prime cuts. You can do butterfly back straps, or if you take a section like that and you cut it out, top all the way through, and then you cut part way through, or it's not all the way through, you can butterfly it and do them on the grill or stuff like that. That's just going to be for the good little pieces with the canning. Here's one of the back straps. Though. Okay, so then on the other side of this thing, I have the same thing. Yeah, well, there you go. So I can see my tube of meat. You see where it goes through. Hear my blade. 
against there, you know, I'm pretty much everything off there I can. Because my blade is running into it the whole time. And then the same thing here. Just make it a separate piece of meat on top of it. What will we do with that? Well, we'll take the meat off of it for canning. And then scrap some of it for something else. So those are our back straps. I gotta clean them up a little bit. Two big old cuts of meat though. This stuff we'll deal with in a minute. And then on the inside of here, we have what they call tenderloin. Right here, see these two sections of meat? Those are the tenderloins. So loins are like legs, you know what I mean? And, and this is the tender part of that. Uh, the loins are like, yeah, the both the legs, like the, the hips and stuff. So this is just part of the, part of the midsection of the deer. Mm -hmm. So these are just tucked up inside of kind of cavity here. Hey little girl, I'm trying to give these children instruction so they can hear me. And you kind of got a lot of jibber jabber. So tenderloin, that's going to be another nice cut of meat that people enjoy. And you feel how it's so you guys probably feel it right now, you will soon, but how cold this deer is still even after after hanging out all night. So and those are the tender ones. So those are a couple of real nice special pieces of meat that people like to get out of the deer. And what I think I'm gonna do too is between the ribs. Hey guys, if you got stuff like this, don't put it in the bowl. If you got stuff that is empty, put it in the bowl. Okay. Oh, we're gonna take out a little bit of steaks for chicken. Well, for what? Yeah, I think I'm gonna peel some of this off and then get in there to the ribs and go. Now that is a good looking loaf of bread. There's herbs and cheese in there and all sorts of stuff. Ah, so cool. Let's try a piece. Hmm. I like it, child. Hmm. Hey, what is that? Jerky. Jerky? Venison jerky? Yeah. From what animal? A deer? Deer? Yeah. And it's looking good, ain't it? We'll eat some soon. Look at that, guys. That reminds me of some of the stuff you can buy at the store. You know what I mean? But we don't need to go to the store. We just go to the no. woods and make our yeah. own. Fist bump. Good. Oops. There we go. No, I don't use the audio. Cut off all the, cut the red stuff. 
You're not gonna do it now, buddy. Hey. Back to work, guys. <laughs> guys, I said back to work. Clap. Right. And what are you gonna taste test? Um, the jerky, right? Venison jerky. Venison jerky. Mmm. 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 You think of the flavor? Mmm. That is so good, darling. You did a really good job. I thank you. Mmm. It's nice and warm and flavorful. Yeah. I want a little taste. Mmm. Somebody likes jerky. That's really Just a good. little soft, tender piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try some for the workers. <laughs> Take a bite. Oh wow, you put your gum on your wrist. There you go. You take a bite halfway there. There you go. What do you girls think? Tastes like jerky. Yum. That way they don't have to get yucky hands. <laughs> Buddy boy. Ugh. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, jerky? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. oh, you work a little more, you get a little more done, you can. Look at that though, guys. That really looks like the stuff you'd get at like a store sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you get bite that one? Oh, this? Yeah. Well, this one's my, this one's my special piece. <laughs> there you go. All right, let me try this one. Yeah. We'll do a little more work. Mm-hmm. Mm mm -hmm. mm. It even looks pretty, too. See the little speckles of, of pepper on there? Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, you did a really That's, nice job. And guys, see, as we're prepping the rest of this, what that does is gives us our reward as we go. So... These are just the first couple pieces that are done, kids. The rest are coming up. Yeah, to turn out things like this, though, guys. Oh, I love something like that. I decided as an additional blessing, just to butterfly all this back strap, and I cut the tenderloins in half. I'm gonna hot smoke this over some hickory in my little outdoor uh, cook stove rock pile. And um, yeah, that's gonna be our dinner tonight. And I'm not sure if I'll be around tonight or out in the woods, but I'll at least take care of this where it needs to go before I do anything. But I love that immediate reward of just enjoying some stuff. And then the children there are still working away. They're making up a bunch of stuff so mama can get cannon. I think we're going to can most of this one. We're just going to pull a couple of roasts out mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get the rest of it canned up and saved. Well, we'll have another meal probably later this week with some venison or something, huh? And you wanted to do a stew? One of, uh... Yes, one of Mrs. Jamie Bowers. Um, I think it's called, she called it venison, venison stew. Okay. We'll look that up and, uh, yeah, make it up. Sounds good. Yes. Well, we're moving along here. They pretty much got stuff cleaned up. 
I'm gonna pull some roast over the hindquarters and they'll make short work of the rest of it. But if you notice here, look at these ribs. I just pulled all the meat off of these. There was a time years ago I wouldn't pull the meat off of the ribs. The other year I did a test and I just cut out these strips from in between there and made some jerky with them and it was amazing. And I said, yeah, I'm not gonna be that foolish ever again. You can see, I mean, you wanna talk about picking a carcass clean, there wouldn't even be much for vultures on this part anymore. So I'm gonna flip it, get the other side. We'll get another batch of jerky in. I'll pull some roast out of there and then fire up my outside uh, cook stove too. And uh, this is gonna be our stuff for for canning. We got a couple big bowls of those coming and we'll see what else we get. So I just pulled six big roasts off of this thing. Here's an example of one. Oh, here's an example of another. Nice big roasts. Mix that with some meat and taters, put it in the Instant Pot, we'll be good. This is pretty well clean, but there's a little bit of finishing up to do. Um, I may roast the, well, we'll see what we do with the bones. Chronic wasting disease kind of puts a damper on some things. Normally we would um, make a bone broth and a bunch of stuff, or fire roast them and give them to the dogs, or fire roast them and just nibble everything off ourselves as carnivores, but I don't know. I'm still navigating this whole CWD thing going on. But the kids here are saving a bowl of some long strips to make their own jerky. And they're also still putting a bunch of stuff in here for mom to can up, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so we're going to make some pressure canned deer meat. A lot of that stuff off of that carcass there. Let's get it for mama because it's not the nice thin strips. It's just the roast or stew meat that we can uh, can up ahead of time. So, they're moving forward with that. I hid a jar of jerky in here. So I got some jerky. I just put a couple of uh, silica gel packets in there and put it in the fridge. Um, and I'm gonna get this um, rib meat turned into jerky here too. This will be the stuff we munch off of first. Oh, and I'm excited. Mama found the little thing of snacks I left out and the kids just asked if they could use the rest of my marinade. Uh, for their jerky when I get mine out of here, which is wise. Um, I'm also gonna walk them through the process. I did two years back when we had some, I had them make their own jerky. So they're taking the carcass, they're cutting it off, they're gonna marinate it, they're gonna run this and take care of stuff. Um, it's good skills to have. Um, even a friend of mine, I was talking about jerky and they're like, you know how to make jerky? And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, we know how to make jerky. So I'm gonna get this in this oven though and get this going. And here are the bones, guys. Those children pick those carcasses extremely clean. And you guys got some stuff held back to make your own jerky? Yes, sir. And then we'll see how many cans of canned venison we get off of here, too. Six nice roasts. I got the butterfly back straps and the tenderloins hot smoking right now. We had some jerky ready, more to come. And yeah, not much, not much left in those carcasses. Or that carcass. So 
at this point of the game, I got these where I want them. Check this out. Oh, I'll get an oven mitt. And all I'm gonna do is keep them in the oven with that jerky so they remain warm while mama finishes up the vegetables. That's them though. Let's take a look. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. So butterfly all that back strap and I did cut the tenderloins here in half so I have four instead of two just to make them an even consistency as far as how thick they were because I was doing them with these guys. Now these guys look absolutely delicious. Look at that. Mmm. So that's obviously going to be some very tasty stuff for us. And they are nice and warm. I can't wait. Just kind of part of that immediate reward off of getting something. You know, I could store this in the freezer for later while I pull something out of the freezer to eat, but that don't make no sense. We'll get some good meals out of it right away while we put up some of our other stuff that we got canned and we'll go from there. So at the moment, I'm just going to eat one of these and run because I'm going to see if I can go get anything else. Um, it's still early in the season. There's not a lot of people out. Most people I know in my area bow, uh, sorry, gun hunt. So that's not going to be for a while. So I'm going to try to get while the getting's good. Bugger says I should get a what? A buck, a, a doe. He says a big buck, but if I get a doe, that's okay too. So <laughs> we'll see what happens here. But. Buck or a doe? Oh. Oh. Oh, darling. Oh, darling. Hmm. Don't do this to me. It's not dinner time yet. Darling. 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 So I'm going to keep this warm in the oven. So when you're done with your... So when you're done with your uh, vegetables, you got it ready. Oh. Mmm. Guys, you have no idea. Unless you butterfly back straps and hot smoke them. Then you have an idea. So good, Bug. Darling, you're so good at what you do, too. Smoking stuff. Darling, it's so tender, too. You're awesome. It just uh, comes apart, nice little. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna go kill some, I'm maybe. Glad you're my husband. Oh, darling. With such skills. Excuse me? She's glad I'm her husband, y'all. <laughs> she didn't even taste it yet. She didn't even taste it yet. She's I still glad. I your beef jerky, and it's amazing. Mmm. Well, uh, that was venison jerky. Uh, yes, venison jerky, sorry. Oh, okay. So, Mama made some squash and taters and some snake gourd noodle bean thing? Is that what that is? Yes, and uh, Malabar spinach. And Malabar, nice. Those are our top three garden plants. Yeah, that's actually. our soup mix, usually. That's our, yeah, exactly. So, we shared actually some of these with some friends because we thought it was such a good blessing, we'd bless them as well. I'm going to grab one of these split tenderloins and one of these guys. I wasn't sure if I'd be back eating with the family for dinner. But my time out in the wild was unsuccessful. So here I am back eating with the family, which is okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay if you didn't get anything. <laughs> it's okay. There's always tomorrow is another day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got some tasty ones, kids. Why don't you pick a pick one handsome out? This looks like a cute little one for a sweetie pie pepper. <laughs> you got a good one, Bug? Yep. You gonna like that? Yeah. Oh, she dug in before even thanking God for him. Mm. Oh, she followed up. Mm. Darling, what kind of example are you setting? Dog. Mm. <laughs> wow, guys, look at those grill marks. It is hickory hot smoked. Mmm, buddy wants some. What do you got there? Hey, Chili, you eating your squash and taters? Whoa, that boy got a fork. Careful. How do you like your meat? <laughs> Can anyone taste the smoke flavor in that meat? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Is it tastiness? Yeah. Pinky, have you tried your tenderloin yet? Give it a nibble and tell me what you think. <laughs> Look at how tender that meat is, huh? Got the smoke flavor? And I've got focusing problems, so we're gonna eat. And then I think we're on to canning. 
can't All right. Me. Yes, we can. Mm hmm Yes, we can. Yeah. Hey. Mm -hmm. And here is what that next batch of jerky looks like. This is from the ribs again. They've got a little fatter end from where the extra meat was at the bottom, but they look amazing. I think they're going to taste great. I'm not sure if the children are doing theirs today. We'll probably marinate them overnight. So we'll get that going here in a bit, and then we can do them tomorrow. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah, but that's a good pile. And this is just the rib meat. A bunch of tasty jerky. What do we got here, darling? It looks like we've got some venison packed up and ready for the pressure canner. All right, so we actually have a dozen pint jars. We got them pretty much packed full with a little bit of headspace. And what do we add to them? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You can add a pinch of salt or something if you want. We don't add anything that makes its own juice. We don't need water, right? That is correct. We're just going lazy, mm. lazy way. <laughs> so again, this wasn't the largest deer. It was probably a yearling, about a year to year and a half old. That's fine. Uh, we held back six nice sized roasts. We took the back strap and the tenderloin out. The kids have a good portion of um, jerky stuff that they're gonna be making. There was a nice sized bowl just full of it. Which probably would have got us another two or three pint jars. I think it'd be four or less for sure. Probably two or three. But this is a nice way just to have it. Where we don't need to keep it in our freezer. We have two full size, well two chest freezers here. Of different sizes. We wish we didn't. Wish we'd get it down to one. But the more stuff we put in the freezers. The more we need the freezers. So the more stuff we can do like this the better. And then in the event of a power outage. These work really well. <laughs> Do you remember your time and stuff right now? For these? Yeah. Um, I think it's 11 pounds pressure for 25 minutes, I believe. Not bad. Something that's, like that. That's easier than the fish then. Wait, no, it's not no. 25 minutes. Nope. It's more. Yeah. Yeah. 90 some minutes maybe. Okay. I can't remember exactly, but. We do our fish at 10 pounds pressure for 100 minutes, right? 11 pounds pressure. I think. 11 pounds pressure for 100 minutes for our canned carp and sucker. This is probably something similar, but we'll get the process going and let you know for sure. <laughs> I can't remember. I haven't looked at it. I, haven't, I didn't look at it at all last year because we didn't get any. We did chicken instead, canned chicken. Yeah, off our meat birds. But it should be the same but I can't remember right now. We'll double check. So what'd you get going last night, my lady? I finished up the venison, um, canned venison. Well, let me see on those and look at that, guys. See how we didn't add any liquid to that? Yeah, it's got all that liquid on its own. Yep, and, and it was 11 pounds pressure for 75 minutes for pints. Nice. So. And we got a dozen off of her? Yes. Okay. So I'm really happy to get us on our start here with canned venison. So what I use this for, just quickly, um, is um, you can use it to make some tacos um, quickly and some tortillas. Throw some cheese on there, just really quick. I've also made some venison pot pie with this and I cannot wait to make it again. So that's another thing I do with it. Um, I've used it to make Mrs. Jamie's Bowers um, venison and bean stew as well. I just tossed one of these in there with a jar of salsa, some broth and some cream cheese and stir it all up. So um, this really helps out in those times where I'm um, short on time, I'll just pop one of these open, or if I really need to have some venison, I will use this. So, all right, so thankfully we got one deer so far, and hopefully we'll get another one here soon. Um, I'm really looking forward to canning up some more venison as much as we can for this year or this season. And um, if there's anything that we didn't uh, mention about um, venison this time or canning venison, um, let us know down in the comments be below and we'll um, let you guys know. Or anything else for um, processing the deer or 
anything in this video you have a question about, please let us know down below in the comments and we'll get back to you guys. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you guys later. Mom out. Thank you for watching.